fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. The troops who manned Fort Benton when the frontier was new played an important part in the development of the West. Upon them rested the responsibility for safeguarding thousands of settlers whose lives and property were constantly menaced by hostile Indian tribes. It was not an easy job, and in the heat of battle, each man reacted in his own way. Some were brave, some were cowards, some were later decorated, and some died. This is the story of Private Jack Carey of the 3rd Mounted Regiment, who deserted. Well, Macy? I'm afraid we've lost him, sir. But he must be in this area somewhere. He didn't even have a horse, Sergeant. Yes, sir, I know, but he did get quite a jump on us. And that windstorm last night wiped out all his footprints. He's headed towards those mountains, obviously. Oh, I expect he is. Off to join Dirk Blaisdell and his gang of renegades. I don't understand it. What will General Carey think when he learns his own son is deserted? Well, uh, Private Carey wasn't the first one to quit, sir. First or last, it doesn't condone his action. No, it doesn't. But somehow I can't quite believe Carey left for the same reason the others did. What are you talking about? Well, sir, Hawks, Johnson, and Pickett were scum of the earth to begin with. Cutthroats, all of them. It's natural they joined Blaisdell. But Carey was different. I watched him. I remember the time I met my first redskin in battle. I remember what it did to me inside. But you didn't desert, Sergeant. No, I didn't desert. Well, frankly, I don't care why Carey left. My job is to find him and bring him back. Yes, sir. I may be new to the West, but I'll wager I could even find Blaisdell if the Colonel would give me leave to go through those mountains with a detachment. Well, more than one detachment's tried and failed, sir. Blaisdell knows those mountains like he knows the palm of his own filthy hand. He's only human, Sergeant. But if his gang grows any bigger, he'll give us more trouble than the Indians ever thought of. Well, I'm um, begging your pardon, Lieutenant, but in my opinion, there's only one man smart enough to stop him now. Oh, and who might that be? Well, people around here call him the Lone Ranger. Now, don't tell me you believe that poppycock too, Macy. There's no such person. He's a legend, a myth. He doesn't exist. I'm not so sure about it, Lieutenant. Well, I am. So let's forget about him and concentrate on Private Carey. If we circle this area, we may be able to pick up his trail. I only hope that Blaisdell hasn't sent someone out to meet him. You go this way, and I'll go that. We'll meet back here. Yes, sir. Come on. Lone Ranger. Meanwhile, less than a mile to the north, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the masked man's young nephew, Dan Reed, were riding toward the town of Mountain City. Why we stopped, Kimmy Sonny? Mountain City's just beyond that valley, Tonto. I'm not known in town. We better say goodbye to Dan here. I, I wish you'd let me stay with you, sir. I know you're after Dirk Blaisdell. Well, three men are sometimes better than two. I mean, there's plenty of ways I could help. I'm sure there are, Dan. But Dirk Blaisdell's one of the most vicious outlaws in the West. I can't risk your life in the search for him. But it better you stay in Mountain City, Dan, with your friend Pete Benson. We meet you again in maybe two, three weeks, and we ride together again. So you're both ganging up on me, huh? Well, maybe I like Mountain City. But don't forget to come after me. We not forget. Goodbye, sir, and good luck. Goodbye, Dan. Adios, Tunnel. Adios. Oh, Victor. This is a fine boy, Tonto. Soon him be fine man, Kimisaki. We must return to camp. We have a lot to do. Huh. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. For I'm going to Mountain City with my banjo on my knee. Stop where you are. Get down off that horse. Are you all right, soldier? Never you mind whether I'm all right or not. Water. Give me your canteen. Third Mounted Regiment. You must be from Fort Benton. Maybe. If you're in any trouble, I know a man who... Who said I was in trouble? I'm going to have to borrow your horse for a while. Oh. Oh. You're too weak to ride. I think... I knew it. We'll get you back to camp and get some food in, and then... And then what? I ask you a question, Sonny. Sure, I... Uh... You sort of surprised me coming up on me like that, Sergeant. I see you're from the Third Mounted, too. I found this... What's your name, Sonny? Dan Reed. Live around here? Why all the questions? I haven't done anything wrong. 
No? I heard you say something about taking this fellow back to camp. What camp? Why, the camp where my... What difference does it make? Maybe none, maybe a lot. Depends upon whether anybody sent you out here to meet this man. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just on my way to Mountain City. Well, you're a little young, but maybe Blaisdell figured you'd have an easier time than one of his regulars. Look, you act as though I were some sort of criminal. Is it against the law to help a man in trouble? Well, it might be. If the man in trouble happened to be a deserter from the United States Army. A deserter? Technically, private carry is absent without leave. A court-martial will decide on the charge. Wait a minute. Did you say private carry? That's right. Any relation to General George Carey? His son. But no son of General Carey would desert. You know the general? Oh, a friend of mine has known him for years. Listen, there must be some mistake. Well, I kind of wish there was myself, Sonny, but I'm afraid there isn't. Now, if you'll just come along with me back to the post. Uh, sure, Sergeant, but there's somebody who ought to know about this first. Hey, come back here! Golly. Soldier. Huh? Get up. We must get away from here. Climb up behind me, quick. Where are we going? To see a couple friends of mine. We're both in trouble now. Sergeant Macy. Mm. Oh. oh, Lieutenant. What happened here? Oh, where are they? Where is who? Private Carrion. Do you mean to say you found Carrion and let him get away again? Well, he wasn't alone, sir. So Blaisdell did send a gang to pick him up? Well, not a gang exactly. And... No? Just how many men opposed you in this fight, Sergeant? One. One? Well, it was a boy, sir, maybe so tall, 15, 16 years old. Sergeant Macy, have you been drinking? No, sir. You let a 15-year-old boy beat you into unconsciousness, steal your prisoner, and then ride off as free as a breeze. Well, I, I don't rightly know what happened, Lieutenant. I was running along, chasing them, and then everything went black. Are you in shape to carry on, or do you want to go back to the fort? All I want, sir, is to get my hands on carrying that little pipsqueak. Their trail shouldn't be hard to follow. All right, let's go. What's the matter, soldier? Sorry, Phil, I'm done. I can't go another step, but we're almost there. Did you hear that, Tonto? Sound like Dan. Dan, what are you doing back here? Who's this? It's a long story. If we could get him to camp and give him some food. Of course. Tonto, would you give me a hand? Feel better now? Who are you? What happened? If you're one of Kirk Blaisdell's men, I... I'm not an outlaw, Private Carey. You know my name. Dan told me. But I think I would have recognized you sooner or later anyway. I've never seen you before. Perhaps not. But I've seen you. I've worked with your father many times. With the General, but... Wait a minute. Dad's talked about a masked rider and a... and a white horse. Are you the Lone Ranger? Yes, Jack. You drink. Then, then you must be Tonto. Me Tonto. Me make Indian medicine for you. Make you strong again. Now then, suppose we decide what to do about you. Just how much do you know? Well, I know you've been accused of desertion, and from what Dan says, at least one soldier from the fort is on your trail right now. Me go stand lookout, Kimasami. Good idea, Tonto. Of course, we're not saying you did desert, mister. There was probably some mistake. There was no mistake. I know what you're thinking. This is the son of General George Carey. Well, what's that got to do with it? Just because I'm not the man my father is? Tell us what happened, Jack. We were on patrol. Eight of us. All of a sudden, there were shots. We'd stumbled into an Indian ambush. It was terrible. It was like... like shooting at ghosts. I don't know how long it was, but, but after a while, they, they rode off. 
We had four dead. Four out of eight, mister. Half our force. Young men, friends of mine. I started back with the rest of them. But something happened to me. I realized I, I couldn't go through it again. I dropped behind. My horse had been shot. That's all there is. I, I just walked off. Then you never intended to join Dirk Blaisdell. I may be a yellow coward, mister, but I'm no outlaw. Did you know Blaisdell at the fort? Everybody knew him. When his gang was broken up, he enlisted. He found some men who were willing to join him in a new gang. He deserted. The rest of them left as soon as they had a chance. Did he try to persuade you to join him? He mentioned it to me. I told him no. What difference does it make? I made such a mess of everything. I must have been crazy. Jack, I'm going to ask you the most important question of all now. What do you mean? You didn't run away from a battle. You deserted after it was over. Would you like to go back? If I go back, they'll shoot me. And if you don't? If I don't... Yeah, I, I see what you mean. I couldn't live with myself for the rest of my life. Firing squad would be quicker death. Could you join Dirk Blaisdell? Well, I wouldn't join that dirty... I didn't ask you if you wanted to. I asked you if you could. Yes, I, I suppose I could. Can you find him? Yeah, I think so. I, if I head into those hills, some of his men would spot me. Jack, listen. Army rules are rigid. Few men get a second chance to be a soldier. If someone gave you that chance, would you take it? See, Miss Abby, two soldiers come on horseback. One of them is a sergeant. I, I had trouble with them. Well, Jack, what's your answer? All right. I don't know what your plan is, but, but I do want another chance. You ride with Dan. Why don't we go, Kim Abby? Back to that abandoned shack that we passed yesterday. There they go, sir. Four of them. They must be part of Blaisdell's gang. Yes, Come on, sir. let's go. Come on. Come on. No use, Sergeant. They have too much of a lead. And we can't go any farther unless we give these horses a rest. I guess you're right, sir. But I haven't given up. They're heading for the mountains. Maybe we ought to go back to the fort for reinforcements. And lose their trail altogether? We'd waste two days that way, Sergeant. No, my orders were to bring Carrie back, and by heavens, I'm going to do it. That's the situation, Jack. Once we find Blaisdell's camp, we'll be able to smash his gang for good. He may already have heard that you've deserted. In any case, he'll believe you when you say you want to join him. Yeah. However, I want to make it entirely clear that it's up to you, if you'd rather not take the risk. Let me think for a while, mister. What about those troopers behind us? What if they find this shack before we have time to carry through the plan? They'll not find us very soon. Trail hidden when we ride up mountain stream. Take them many days to find it on other side. All right. Count me in. I thought you'd say that. You know what you're to do, Tonto. Ah, me go with Kerry. Tell Blaisdell me find soldier in foothills, give him food and water. Soldier say him on way to join Blaisdell. So me want to join Blaisdell, too. Right. Then slip out after dark and tell me the location of his camp and the number of the men he has. Ah. That sergeant thought I was one of Blaisdell's men. Maybe I could go along with Tonto and Private Kirian. You're going to stay right here where I can watch you, young fellow. Seems to me you've managed to get into enough trouble as it is. Well, let's be on our way. No sense in wasting time around here. Now we go now. See you tonight, Tonto. Adios. Throughout that afternoon, Tonto and Jack Carey traveled higher and higher into the rugged, mountainous area, hoping to be seen by Dirk Blaisdell or one of his henchmen. It was nearly sundown when... Hello, soldier. Hello, Dirk. So you finally got enough of the old army life, eh, kid? I heard you deserted. One of my boys was in Mountain City when the news came out. You remember Smiley Hawks. Howdy. Hello, Smiley. How are you? I kind of figured you'd head for these mountains. I didn't know whether you'd see me or not. You told me to strike out in this direction. We've been following you for the last hour, kid. Well, is the offer still open, Dirk? To join the gang? I've always wanted you with us, kid. You know that. The more, the merrier. Which brings us to your quiet friend here. He's more than a friend, Dirk. He, he saved my life. Yeah? He found me in the foothills and gave me food and water. 
He could have turned me in, but he didn't. Him say him on the way to join Dirk Blaisdell. Me want to join gang, too. That's so? Huh. Smiley, my boy. Suppose you escort our friend to the cabin. I want to have a little talk with Jack. All right, Dirk. All right, Injun. Let's go. What's the matter, Dirk? You act like you don't trust us. What's the engine's name? Why, I didn't ask him. Maybe you should have. Why? I told you we've been watching you for the last hour, kid. We didn't pick you up sooner because Smiley was trying to think where he'd seen that engine before. He finally remembered. I don't get you. His name is Tonto. A long time ago, he and a mass pal put Smiley behind bars in Montana. Smiley never forgets a face. But there's no harm done. We'll take him to the hideout and get rid of him. But, Dirk, you can't do that. Why not? Well, he... he saved my life. Look, kid, I like you. I wouldn't have asked you to join the gang if I didn't, but don't go all to pieces on me. The Indian and his pal tricked you. They were probably looking for my hideout when they came across you. Oh, the engine probably saved your life, all right. But only because you could lead him to me. Maybe, maybe you got the wrong Indian. You can't be sure. Well, there's a way to find out. How? If Smiley's right about this character, his pal's bound to be around somewhere. He'll come looking for the engine sooner or later. And when he does, we'll be waiting. I've heard a lot about those two. Time somebody took care of them once and for all. Dirk, listen. You, you know, Carrie, it seems to me you're the one that's been acting a little funny. You got something on your mind? No. If no, I, I thought you were in cahoots with those... Nah. You're a deserter, too. You'd be shot just as dead as the rest of us if anybody found you. Come on, I'll show you to the hideout. What are you doing that for? Now, we wouldn't want our masked friend to lose his way, would we? <laughs> that night, the Lone Ranger waited for Tonto to return. And as the hours passed, a growing uneasiness crept over him. With the first sign of dawn, the masked man decided to act. Dad. Dad. Yes, sir? What is it? Is Tonto back? Not yet. I'm going after him, Dan. Something must have gone wrong. I'll go with you. No. I have another job for you. Yes, sir. I want you to ride back along the trail we took yesterday. Find the two soldiers who were following Carrie. Then lead them up the path into the mountains that I take. I'll see that my tracks are clear. We may need help. But... What is it? You don't think Private Carey... I mean, he wouldn't really join Blaisdell, would he? I don't know. It would be the easiest way out for him. We'll worry about that later. I'd better get started. Be careful, Dan. I will, sir. Will you stop that infernal whistling? You ought to do something about them nerves, kid. Look at your friend. Nothing bothers him. <laughs> Dirk, let him go. No masked man's gonna show up. Yeah? Well, he's on his way. The masked man? Yeah, Johnson and Piggott are gonna circle around and follow him up. I told him not to shoot. I told him you wanted the honor. You see, kid, when are you gonna start believing old Dirk when I tell you something? I guess you were right, Dirk. Makes me feel kind of silly. So your trick didn't work, huh, Indian? If his pal's coming, I better make sure these ropes are still tight. Yeah, I guess that'll do. This is going to be fun. Like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, Blaisdell. Get over there by your friend. Are you all right, Carrie? Sure, mister. The bullet just grazed me. Carrie, give me knife to cut hands free, Kimasabi. Then him jump on Blaisdell. Him brave man. Me, brave? Yes, Carrie. You. So Dan found you, Lieutenant. He found us. But I must admit, he led us a merry chase. But it paid dividends. We ran into Johnson and Pickett on our way up here. Sergeant Macy's outside with him now. Now we've captured all the deserters. Lieutenant, I... I wasn't referring to you, Carrie. Dan told us about your part in this. You dirty devil-crossing polecat. I should have known you wouldn't make an outlaw if it hadn't been for you. So you admit Private Carey helped in your capture, eh, Blaisdell? That statement's going to weigh heavily in his defense at the trial. Personally, I think the Board of Inquiry ought to give you a medal, Carey. I intend to recommend the lightest possible sentence. Thank you, sir. Is everything over? It's all over, Dan. I knew I shouldn't have stopped at the shack, but I wanted to bring Scott along. Silver's outside, too, sir. Good. In that case, we might as well be on our way. Aren't you riding back to Ford with us, mister? No, Lieutenant. Tonto and Dan and I have other work to do. Adios. Wait a minute, mister. He didn't even give me a chance to thank him. Apparently he doesn't need thanks, Carrie. It was enough for him to see that you came out all right. He's a remarkable man. And I'll probably never hear the end of this from Sergeant Macy. There really is a Lone Ranger. Oh,